Okay, I'm kind of stealing what Helen said, but I swear I have the similar idea. Um, but the kind of running joke in our chapter um, is when we're supposed to make confer regional conference calls that uh, Melissa has just been told me. Uh, because we don't have a whole lot of people in the South, we don't have a whole lot of connectivity. And I think one of the most important things is reaching out to all of the chapters and building them up and making sure all of the regions are together and aware of what we're all doing. I mean, we all have SSDP talk, SSDP chapter leaders, but I think there needs to be more communication between us because I don't necessarily always know exactly what's going on in all the other chapters, <clears throat> and I'd really like to. Um, yeah, I just want to just increase awareness and connectivity. All right, so my first policy priority, if elected to the board, would be Colorado. Ending federal, I mean, Colorado is the first step towards ending federal marijuana prohibition. As I said in my speech the other day, that's how we did it with alcohol, and that's how we're gonna do it with marijuana, starting at the state level. Uh, Montana was the, the first state in the country in 1926, seven years before the end of federal uh, alcohol prohibition, and they repealed all of their state laws that were enforcing that prohibition. Pretty much in Colorado, it can be really similar. Colorado can be the Montana of marijuana prohibition, and I will focus my energies completely on helping that pass. Um, for me, I have to say, first within SSDP, uh, particularly with the diversity committee, that's the committee I want to run for. Um, keyword diversity, it, honestly, I, I feel like um, there needs to be policies within SSDP for more of a minority perspective. Um, I believe that um, with that understanding, the integration of having actual life experience and also educational background will help key with our future policies and understanding the key components on this war against drugs. So my primary concern right now is that we have an amazing strategic plan that lays out all of our goals, but we don't have an actual plan of how we're going to achieve those goals. So for me, I think in the next strategy summit, it is vitally important that we not only establish goals, but make sure they have a specific strategy to achieve them and the tactics that we're going to get to get there. And it's great to have goals, but if you don't actually know how you're going to do it or how the chapter is going to play a part in achieving those goals, then it doesn't really get us a whole lot actually done. So I would use that strategic plan to also leverage our national power in Colorado. I'm with Sam. I think that Colorado is a number one priority right now because it will dramatically change everything and if we can kick some ass there then I think that'll increase our fundraising everywhere else and lastly I think the way we're going to be able to do that is if we take a diversity approach to Colorado I think SSDP should be thinking about specific demographics that are traditionally left untargeted and maybe MPP doesn't have the resources to target them specifically and using our national um, power to actually affect the demographic that traditionally would be against us so that we can actually do something different and change the paradigm and win in 2012. I'm really interested in increasing communication between the board and the chapters. I think that this is vital in uh, furthering our mission of student empowerment, which is right up there with the top things that SSDP does. Um, if elected, as Irina said last night, I'm a representative for you, and I want to know what you, uh, SSDP members at all levels care about what they want to see in strategy crafting, and um, I also want to help encourage students as I have been encouraged. I was so fortunate to attend the strategy summit, um, and if I hadn't done that, also I love the diversity uh, committee model. Uh, people can be on the diversity committee and work with that who are not board members, and I think that that kind of bridging helps people uh, see themselves aspiring for leadership positions. So I want to continue uh, student empowerment and increase open lines of communication to strengthen the ties within SSDP. Hello, uh, Catherine Salentano again. Um, I mean, one, which is obvious in the sense that I talk about it all the time, but integrating the recovery community. I have relationships ready to go with mainstream mental health organizations that I want to bring to us and make that seem like it's not counterintuitive. We already have a lot of great connections in medical marijuana, et cetera, and we can continue to strengthen those connections, but there is an entire constellation of advocacy that we are not connected to. And something that I think is about to hit us potentially like a freight train is this drug court thing that's happening and what you're seeing in New Jersey, where we really are having a public acceptance of a public health shift, but we have a really challenging thing that's about to happen because we're about to get an economy built up around that where there are jobs that are predicated upon a criminal justice model, which is the drug courts. So it's not just that we need to have this intellectual shift where people understand the drug courts aren't the, the, the end goal, but we need to prevent that industry from getting too strong so we don't run into the problem we're having with prison guard unions in California. And as someone who has been through coerced treatment myself, although not um, under legal coercion, and I've visited friends who were on legal lockdown, I can very personally and specifically speak to that nuance as to why that's actually not a true public health approach. And I think that's 
scary what's going on there. We need to address it.